In this video, we will cover actionable signals, which tell us to expect price movement, give us winning positions, and allow us then to enter into periods of control in time frame continuity. So if you did not watch the last video, please go and watch it. I'm gonna put it up in here in the top corner. Go and watch that first. It will make this video even more useful for you. That being said, this video is not gonna cover every single signal. It is going to cover the major ones that occur most often, including a rev strat, which is one of the most important signals to know about because it, when it occurs with continuity, it must work. There's no reason it shouldn't. And if it doesn't, then so be it, we stop out. But more often than not, it will work and it will work very well. So that being said, all of these slides, the two that I'm showing you is two of like 30 that we have for the Strat Bootcamp. So if you like this type of content, we have the Bootcamp coming out on September 3rd and these slideshows will be given to you. You get all the copies of it and we'll also be going through and teaching you guys live to answer questions and flesh out the Strat for you, including things like trade plans, including things like all the actionable signals and including things like how do you use the stat trading scan site? How do you use the stat trading live streams during the day? So if you like this stuff, go and check that out as well. There will be a link in the description below. Without further ado, let us get started. So what is a signal? Why is it actionable? And what's the trigger? What's the entry? So an actionable signal is what we look for in order to create positions. And this will be a combination of candlesticks, so ones, twos, and threes, or specific types of candlestick formations, such as hammers, shooters, or dojis. And this gives us additional information to expect price movement, which is the goal, right? Everyone wants to expect the move. How do you do that? With signals, because they cause the movement. To create winning positions, and this is the why of actionable signals. So to create winning positions, there must be a loser on the other side of your trade. And this is why our signals work because they identify losing participants with certainty and thus increase your probability of a winning position. So an actionable signal does not mean when it forms, it has to work because sometimes things fail. It does not mean that the analysis is incorrect. It just means potentially that buyer or seller we were identifying is no longer there. So be it, go into the next trade, find the next signal. And since this will work, you want to trade as many of these as possible once you know them. So it's super important to do that. Now signal basics. Each actionable signal will have a trigger, which is your entry, and a magnitude, which is your initial target. Continuation signals may or may not have a magnitude, which is why continuations are gonna be more risky to take because of what we will talk about in the near future. The first signal you wanna understand is the 212. And if you don't know the numbers, I'll quickly explain those. So a 212 is an inside bar reversal or continuation, depending on which direction it's going. So we would say this is a two to the upside going higher. And then we go inside bar, which is a lower high and a higher low. That is the actionable signal here that forms. And it's an actionable signal because it quantifies a specific market condition. When an inside bar forms, it tells you buyers and sellers agree on price. Because if price is not going higher and it's not going lower, they agree. They're like, okay, the stock's worth this much. So once that level has created itself, once the inside bar has closed, we say that is an equilibrium. They agree on prices. So when it, the equilibrium is broken up or down, what it tells you is there's now someone taking the offer or hitting the bid. So it identifies when they agree on price. And then after that, the trigger identifies when someone's now hitting the bid and there's a new seller entering the market or when someone's taking the offer and there's a new buyer entering the market aggressively because they're saying, no, it is no longer worth this much. We disagree. It should go lower. And this would be a two up, one, two down reversal. And a two is simply higher low, higher high, or a lower high, lower low. So this is a two down because it makes a lower high and a lower low to the previous inside bar range. The magnitude is the low of the mother bar that creates the inside bar right here. It's the low of this. And then the trigger is the low of the inside bar. And a two down, one, two up reversal is gonna be a red two to the downside that is countered by an inside bar equilibrium that breaks 212 up. And your trigger is here, the magnitude is the high of this bar. And you'll notice we have a losing participant on the other side of this trade. Is in the game of stock market, there is a winner and a loser for every single move. You want to be the winner and the winner is going to be against the loser, right? So if you're long and then it reverses down, you're losing. So we go and take that trade. If it's going down and then it reverses up, these guys are losing. So we go and buy that trade. 
right? Very simple. And as far as stops are concerned, we would use the low of this candle or the open of this candle that we enter on. And they would be the high of this candle or the open of this candle that we enter on, depending on the trader. For new traders, we suggest going tighter just to manage your downside risk so you actually have money to trade with once you understand the strategy and can implement it profitably. We can also have the inside bar continuation. This is a misprint on the PDF here that I'm gonna have to fix. You can see we have a two to the upside, which is green, followed by an equilibrium inside bar that then breaks up again. So notice this is a buyer, then an inside bar, which potentially there's some profit taking or selling going on here. And then that same buyer comes back to buy more. So it's continuation of aggressive buying. Thus, the magnitude will likely be smaller. Also, since it's continuation, less probable of a profitable outcome. So when we go inside bar continuation, we call it an inside bar add. We prefer to enter on reversals and add on continuations instead of entering on continuations and then price reverses against and you take a loss. And you can have the 212 up. You can also have the 212 down continuation. And the inside bar continuation is commonly used as a measured move where you get a large move followed by a brief pause, the inside bar, followed by an equal size move of that previous move. Because what we're identifying is someone has like a million shares to fill and then they sit on the bid and they keep that thing up there inside bar, right? They agree, it's like, yep, should be worth this. And then they go in and they have another million shares to fill and then it goes again. When looking for high probability setups, reversals will always have a higher chance of success simply because when you trade back through a previous range, meaning it was previously going up and then you're back through that previous range, you're going to stop people out who are on the wrong side of the trade. So you take the winning position, stop out the losing position. And when playing continuations, it's a continuation of aggressive buying or selling. So you are at the will or of the aggressiveness of the current buyer or seller when you trade a continuation. Once a continuation makes a new high or a new low, we say, we don't know if it's gonna continue. Thus, when you make the new high, it must stay up there. When you make the new low, it must stay down there. And we'll also cover the opposite of an inside bar break, which is the rev strat. And it's super important to understand this. So you'll see some examples. This is the Dow Jones 212 weekly reversal right here, short. The magnitude is this, it takes it out, and then it keeps going, two down, two down, right? So you create the winning position against these guys who are long, and then you hold it because they're still getting killed. And this was April 1st, I believe of 2024. You have IDBM the weekly. This is November 27th of 2023. This is the momentum measured move inside bar continuation. And we say measured move because we want an equal size move of this move. So they come in here, they buy IDBM. Maybe it's 30 million shares. They fill them all. Then it goes inside where they sit on the bid. Price does not go lower. And then it goes inside bar up and that same buyer comes back to buy more. And you get a measured move and it goes much further than the measured move because our signals cause price movement. We can also see an example of this on the yearly time frame. So not only can we do it on like the day, the week, the 60, but we can go to the year and the quarter to get the bigger move. And you'll see AMD on the year, it moves 50% off the inside bar 212 reversal right here. And you'll notice into new highs, we say we don't know because once it's into these new highs, we don't know. So if it starts reversing on a monthly basis, even though the year's in force, that's coming back in, that's profit taking. And we can see it goes 50% and then the month reverses, comes back in a bit. But you make a lot of money just doing that. And then NVIDIA monthly. If you go back to the videos we put out and the Stratatac videos and the nightly videos we put out, we identified NVIDIA at the beginning of the year as one of the best long signals. And you can go and look at the NVIDIA chart to see what we mean there. Um, this was the inside bar signal on the month that caused this to happen. Two up, two up, two up. So you could have known about the NVIDIA rally and bought that momentum measured move with the aggressive buyer taking the offer. We can then also trade two, two reversals. So you'll notice a 2-2 two -two reversal is where you go 2 to the upside, higher high, higher low. And then we ideally look for a 2 up in red where it shows it went 2 up and it was green. And then it gets countered by a new seller entering the market. And then it goes 2-2 two -two reversal here with a trigger and a magnitude of the other side of this bar prior to this 2 up, 2 down reversal. And the reason we look for that is because of a compound 3, which we will explain. You can have this 2-2 two -two to the downside, bearish, or 2 down, 2 up reversal to the upside, bullish. You'll notice we have a losing participant where this guy who is long in here gets it reversed against. They must close their position. When a 2-2 two -two reversal hits its magnitude, it creates what we call a compound 3 or a compound outside bar where the trigger bar and the bar that reverses go outside of the previous bar's range. 
So when you mush the candles together, you create an outside bar broadening formation. So what we can say is whenever price reverses, it creates a broadening formation. So you can see the 2-2 two -two reversal, this looks like a compound three if you put the candles together. And then the 2-2 two -two reversal back up looks like a compound three when you put together the candles. And this is why we trade and we understand the broadening formation allows us to gauge magnitude because this must occur. You will then see the 2-2 two -two week on SPY in here. And this was April 1st of 2024. So notice the month opens, if you watch the continuity video, the month goes red. And then you get the 2-2 two -two week with full time from continuity. The magnitude's this. They go two down, two down, womp, takes them all out. Because of continuity, this can go much further than the magnitude, which it does. BAC on the weekly. You can see the two down in green, signaling and forementioning to you over the weekend, the 2-2 reversal of next week. And then it goes 2-2 and then boom, off to the races, right into your magnitude, goes further because of continuity. And then you can see, this is not only on the lower time frames, but the higher time frames. If you're trading during the 08 crisis, this was a 2-2 reversal short during 08. They sold all year with the yearly continuity red. And then the two down in green here tells you to get long and start entering the market after the 208 crisis. The 2-2 reversal tells you to enter long as the price is now reversed and is going higher. Higher low and higher high, that's a two to the upside. Where is it going? Up there. Two, 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 boom. Takes out all the shorts and goes flying. We can also then talk about the rev strat. And this is the holy grail of positions that you would like to take. Some people will only trade the rev strat because of what we know to be true about this setup. So a rev strat is any inside bar followed by a reversal. So a one followed by a two, two is a rev strat. A one followed by an outside bar is a rev strat, right? And we look for these because we can identify a losing participant being countered by a more aggressive participation group or a more aggressive market participant. And this is because when an equilibrium break is getting reversed, meaning the inside bar broke and then failed the break, this creates a rev strat and it shows us that whoever was breaking that inside bar down, let's say continuation, when it goes green and flips that daily continuity or that candles continuity back into the previous range, it tells you a new buyer has entered the market and they are more aggressive than whoever was selling because whoever was selling right now, they're now underwater. So when this occurs, we can quantify and say there's an aggressive seller who broke an equilibrium lower after buyers and sellers agreed on price. And then a new more aggressive buyer enters the market and then rips it to the other side of the range. So they, whoever broke the equilibrium is then forced to exit. And you'll see this is the two bar rev strat here. So you get the inside bar momentum where it takes out the low and then we say we do not know if it will continue. And then once it starts reclaiming that low, we must take our short position and attempt to go the other way by flipping long with their money, the shorts of this bar here. And then when it goes 2-2 two, two in here, that is the rev strat actionable signal trigger above this and the magnitude is the other side of the mother bar that created the equilibrium. So you can see they agree on price, the seller takes it down, countered by a more aggressive buyer in the other direction. And this is a, such a powerful setup. It creates big magnitudes and big, quick moves. And you can see the inside bar breaks up, failure, two up in red, countered by a more aggressive seller, setting up and for mentioning the 2-2 reversal of the future right here. And the magnitude is then much bigger than a standard 2-2, the low of the mother bar to the downside. You will notice if this was like, let's say a daily chart, on a two-day chart, this is your compound three of these two bars here, gauging our magnitude using the third universal truth of the broadening formation. Same thing here. These two bars are a compound three to these two bars here, unlike a two-day chart. We can also then look for, instead of a compound three, the three. And this will most often occur on a gap. So you'll see the inside bar, the slight gap down, goes into the new low. Then we say, we do not know if it will continue. And then it reverses continuity here reclaiming the inside bar and telling us that whoever was selling before now has to close and whoever is selling in here now has to close and then boom up the other way three to these two bars here and that's your big outside bar same thing to the downside gap up slight green and then flips red right there then the trigger is when you reclaim this your stop would be like the open of this candle or the high of this candle and then the magnitude's down in here we can also have a one bar rev strap such as this, that turns into a two bar rev strat, which is the most aggressive rev strat signal. So in this case, you'll see it's inside bar, it gaps up, then it goes green to red, right? Then what are we looking for? It's telegraphing the potential outside bar rev strat. Then it makes the new low, we don't know. And then the buyer comes back in. So what's happening is the buyer tried to take the offer in here, countered by a more aggressive seller, 
And then that seller is countered by an even more aggressive buyer back up into the range. So you create this broadening formation, three, and then it expands, three, two reversal to the highs. So it's three to the downside because it closed red. And then when it goes two to the upside here, that is the reversal, that is the trigger, that is the magnitude. Same thing on the downside. And you can see it goes down, goes up, then back down again, and then sets up your three, two, one bar rev strat, turn two bar rev strat to the downside. And you'll see this here, Starbucks Weekly, the one, two, two reversal, boom, two, 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 two. Does this because of continuity and saying our signals go much further than their targets more often than not when you have continuity. Cat Weekly, you'll see the one, two, two week and then Womp takes them all out. Notice, and this very important, notice you can pick this out right in here. You can say this is very close to a rev strat going into the new week, short it below that, stop at the open of the week, takes out the magnitude, goes much further than the magnitude. LRCX on the monthly, the one, two, two rev strat, and up they go. We also have an outside bar here. So it's a broadening formation, slight lower low, boom, higher high. This is a compound three to this three here. NVO weekly. This is an example of the one, three, two, two bar rev strat. One becomes a three, right? Closes green, and then three, two to the upside, two, 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 three again, broadening formation. Inside bar, continuation, boom, up they go. Adobe on the daily, an example of the one bar rev strat on a gap. The gaps will most often occur on the daily. If a gap occurs on a Monday, you can get rev strats on the weekly. So you'll see inside gap up right when that goes red, it's telegraphing the potential three and then womp takes them all out. This is three to these two bars here. And then we already did that and that was just a duplicate. So the last thing we'll talk about here is the hammers and shooters. And these are separate from the previous actionable signals we have talked about simply because we can't quantify them in the same sense where we can say we know for sure and it is irrefutably true based on what we know about price action that you have this person getting countered by a more aggressive group unlike a rev strat right um this is gonna be slightly different so hammers and shooters are actionable signals still and they tell us of potentially notice we don't know for certain trapped shorts or longs they are not to use universal truth like the ones, twos, and threes, continuity, and other reversals like the rev strat, the one, two, and three bar rev strats, the inside bar break. Those are universal truths because we can identify the equilibrium and then identify is that working or is it getting countered. But when we see a hammer or shooter form, we do not know for certain if there are shorts or longs that are trapped because of what we'll talk about shortly. And these candlesticks can be used in addition to any signals we have already talked about. And these allow for tighter stop losses because although we are not certain of the trap shorts or longs, when it has broken, if that break goes and never comes back and it goes right away, like it breaks the signal and then it goes right away to the highs on a hammer, we know at that point that our condition that we were trying to identify where there's trapped shorts is true. So similar to like a cup and handle pattern or something where you don't really know if that's a true cup and handle, and I'm saying this very loosely, um, until that breaks and works, or like a head and shoulders. You don't know if it's a true head and shoulders until it works. The hammers and shooters are similar, but since we know we can tighten our stop up, they're actually useful, unlike a head and shoulders or cup and handle pattern, with, which cannot be quantified in the same sense. So you'll notice here, the normal hammer and shooter. You'll see this is combined with a 2-2 reversal, where you get a hammer signal, and this foretells the potential 2-2 reversal, and it's additional evidence to the 2-2 reversal. And when it triggers here, our stop is the open of this bar, very tight. You can also use the spread plus a penny. So if the spread between the bid and the ask is 10 cents, it would be an 11 cent stop because it should just break that and they take the offer instantly if those guys who were previously short are trapped in their shorts. And then you can see the shooter here, same thing. It should just go instantly. Right here, your stop would be the open or at the very most the high of that candle you enter on. And then down they go. Same magnitudes as a 2-2. And when we say quantifiable, what we mean is we know exactly what we're looking for because it's not like, oh, like this might be a breaker block or this might be a head and shoulders or this, it might retest the SMA and then keep going. Um, it is, this is a hammer for certain because it has a large wick and it closed in the top 33% of the candle range and opened in the top 33% of the candle range. And when that breaks and it goes instantly, we know our condition is true, right? So that's a very different statement to, it might do this, it might do that. I'm gonna put my stop and way down here. It's like, this breaks, it must occur this way. If it doesn't, we get out of the way because we don't know what's happening. And 
when we say we don't know why they formed until it has occurred, what we mean is this market going down, going down. When it creates this wick, that could be short covering, right? And then the shorts who are previously short in here, maybe they just all covered. Or it could be an aggressive market participant who is buying down in here, changing that continuity. And then the shorts have to squeeze and get out, right? So it could be either of those two. We don't know until this pattern has completed and triggered. We also have momentum, which is a continuation hammer and shooter. And you'll notice this is a two down, two down continuation. So it's momentum, but you have a shooter signal here. So this foretells the potential for this big candle to the downside. Again, we can't quantify and say for certain though. So when we take this trigger, our stop is the spread plus a penny or at worst, like the open of this bar, it should go instantly. And there is no magnitude on momentum. So we must do this in reference to the other four major timeframes. So let's say you have a weekly enforce and then you get a momentum signal. That is something we look for. And there will be examples uh, that we show here. Also examples I can show you from this week that everyone in stat trading can go and comment and tell you, yes, we did talk about those in the morning. Um, and we say Momo for shorts because we want to get this across as fast as possible because we can say like, okay, spy daily momentum hammer. And then you know exactly what you're talking about within a second, right? There's no guesswork. And this can either be a two down or an inside bar. So you can see here, this is the 212 measured move, momentum hammer. So it's a measured move and it has the hammer for us, which gives us more evidence. And this hammer here shows us potentially poorly timed short positions who are short in here or just profit taking. Again, we cannot quantify exactly what it means until the signal has broken and does not come back. So it goes 212 and you can see we measure this move out and then we copy and paste that and measure this move to project the same move here. And your trigger is this. And again, the, we'd want our stop literally at the open or the low of this candle. When it gaps slightly like this, when it goes red to green, we'd throw it at the low of that candle. We will see an example of this, of the hammer and the momentum hammer on GPS. So you have momentum hammer here to the upside. Then you have the normal hammer here, 2-2 two, two reversal to the upside, and up they go. And then this is paired with full time frame continuity, which is why it keeps going, right? Identifying how many groups are in your favor, how long you have for that signal to just keep confirming. Affirm on the daily. This is an example of the measured move. So big move, I believe this is on earnings, and then the inside bar, the day after earnings, momentum hammer. What are we looking for? Take the offer above that, full time from continuity to the hots, and then two, 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 two. And you can see it goes much further than the projected measured move by a couple percent. And this happens because of continuity still being good. And then you have the shooter up here. If you were to take profit, it did not go anywhere, not changing any continuity. And then we have SPY weekly during COVID. So not only does this work when volatility is lower, but when volatility increases, this actually works better because what we know to be true is what we know to be true. Therefore, SPY went shooter off the highs with COVID on the week. And then the 212 measured move continuation, you can see this bar and this bar are the same size. Down they go. And this is occurring on gaps. So there's some really crazy price action in here. It was a good time to trade. Sadly, I wasn't uh, trading the strat at that time. And then you can see down into the lows again. So it keeps going because of continuity. Tesla on the weekly, the normal shooter. So anyone that was short in here, they get stopped out above this high, right? And then the sellers come and re-enter that. So we stop people out, they re-enter the shorts. There's your 2-2 reversal down, boom. And that is going to cover everything here. Now let's take a look at some of the charts, just show you some examples of this. So SPY, right here, I actually took this position. Uh, I recorded this more than once. So I took this position right here, 553.16. I took the offer. My stop went at the open here just to give it some more room. And the magnitude's high a day, the 212, or the 312 continuation. So you can see it's going up, going sideways, showing ill time short positions or profit taking. And then it goes up again. That's continuation. And this is in con confirmation of the month, week, day, and 60 all being green, full time from continuity. So you'll notice it goes much further than that magnitude. And what we're actually looking for is the weekly magnitude because this signal confirms the 2-2 reversal week as foretold with the two down in green as mentioned on the weekend video. If you don't believe me, go and check out all of our stuff. We put it all up for free just to disprove anyone that believes it is false. And that being said though, we can create the position here with a magnitude on the week to take out 554.87. And the same way we had the magnitude of the week 554.57 down here at 534.51 when that signal went in force and you could manage your risk to the low of the week, this signal reconfirms that. So what we wanna do with these signals is confirm signals across the four major timeframes. 
which is why when we look at the continuity video I put out, everyone's like, where's the indicator? Where's the indicator? And I'm like, I don't want you guys using the indicator. I want you looking at the four time frames because once you understand signals, you can then go and do this across the four time frames in knowledge of the continuity. Because we can say every participant's a buyer. This is a signal on the 60 confirming the weekly signal. We have two signals in force and we have a potential outside bar on the month, two down and green with, you know, 20 or just under 15 days left in the month, right? Now, let's talk about confirming signals across other time frames. Not only does it happen on the 60, but you'll see this. If we go to the Dow Jones, go and look at Monday's nightly video and you will see us mention Dow Jones. We'll either go inside bar up, taking a three, then two, two reversal on the week to the upside on the daily chart on Tuesday, or it will go inside bar down, which will reverse and change continuity to full time frame continuity down. So what happened? It goes inside day up. Can we confirm that daily signal on the 60 chart? We can. And we did mention this during the live stream in stat. I hope people that watch that are from stat watch this and go and type in the comments and be like, yeah, he totally did. Um, that being said, you'll see the inside bar 60. Is that an actionable signal? Yes. Is this a continuation signal? Yes. So you'll see the 60 takes the day in, in force right here. So you buy it, you're risking 26 cents. When that daily signal goes in force, you can add to your position here at 396.04. And when the weekly signal is in force above 39649, you can add to that position here. You can add to your position on the 22 hammer 60. And this is into the day, week, and 60 groups all confirming each other. So you have a period of control. So you can create the position, maybe take some off before CPI, and then let it ride. And you can see up and up and away they go after Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and now Friday, they're still up there. Where are they going? The 2-2 two -two reversal magnitude is 4-1201. The other thing we wanna mention here, and this is the last thing, is understanding how long you have for your trades to play out. We covered it in the continuity video, so go and watch that. We cover it more in depth there. But when you have signals in force, they're only in force for the allotted time frame you're looking at. So if a weekly signal is in force, you have all week to go after it. Therefore, creating positions at the beginning of the week and holding all week, as long as the signal is still in force, is going to be profitable, right? And that signal then, after the week has concluded and closed out, must be either confirmed or negated by the new continuity level that opens next week on Monday. So we create this position on the week, and then next week, let's say it goes two up again on the week, we go and look for 60, 30, 15 daily signals, whatever it is, to go and add to that position because it's still confirming what we know to be true. And we still have a magnitude to 41201 and then potentially back to the all-time highs on the Dow Jones. So I hope this is lining up and making a ton of sense. You will also see today, there is the momentum hammer here. In this case, you'll notice in the morning, it broke momentum, did not go instantly. So whatever this was trying to tell us about potentially trap short participants, just not true, right? We can still say it's an enforced momentum hammer later in the day here and say that gives us additional evidence because it's a daily momentum confirming a weekly reversal. Then the 60 goes 2-2 two, two reversal here. So you got one, two, three signals for 60 minutes. But we cannot say that that momentum hammer is true in the sense that there was trap short positions as it did not go instantly. So that being said, that is going to be the whole video today, guys. I know maybe I talked a little quick. You can go and slow it down to 0.75 and it should sound normal uh, for anyone that needs to do that. And I understand a lot of people say that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm very excited to get this out. And the last thing I would say here is if you're interested in stuff like this, we have a whole strap boot camp that has these two slideshows plus another 30 more about. And we will cover everything from the data science aspect of what we're actually doing with the strat and how we view the charts like we've kind of covered in the continuity video as well as the trade plan and all the different trade plans we have because since we know what we know we know exactly what we're looking for we want reversals on tuesdays for turnaround tuesday we want to go after things that continue to confirm early in the week for the strat attack we want to go after monthly signals every new month and confirm or negate those on the 60 day and week signals that form intramonth so etc cetera, etc cetera. there's a ton of different trade plans and truly i say to you if you just pick one signal and get good at it and trade into continuity good things will happen you will be a winning trader and that is what we want to do here so if you guys enjoyed please share this with a friend that's interested in trading help them out too and i'll see you guys in the future videos on the channel adios and have a great rest of your day